Well, with more on the Arrive Can controversy, we're now joined by Lori Turnbull. She chairs the Public and International Affairs Department at Dalhousie University, also a professor in the Faculty of Management at the school. Uh, Lori, it was good to see you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Good to see you too. Listen, I, I do want to begin here with what we're hearing from the Conservative leader because he, Pierre Polyev is asking uh, not only for cooperation with any police investigation, but he's also asking the Prime Minister to, to waive cabinet confidentiality on materials related to the Arrive Can app. How necessary is that kind of concession to understand how and why the, the app ended up costing as much as it did? Well, I think it depends on what cabinet knew and what would be in the material that would be covered by cabinet confidence, because I, up until this point anyway, and, and I think still the prime minister is is saying we, we didn't know about this and ministers are saying we didn't know anything about this. We were not briefed up. It wasn't uh, proper protocol was not followed. The proper documentation wasn't there. So as the cost of these thing, this thing was ballooning, the ministry wasn't aware of that. And so therefore, um, we, cabinet confidentiality is about cabinet conversations. Uh, documents that are part of cabinet meetings, briefings that go to cabinet ministers. And so I think the, what what would be found in there, you know, if there's anything, I think Polyev is looking for anything that could be in that material or in those conversations that could point to ministerial awareness that this was an issue. But we don't know what would be in those documents. We don't know what was part of those conversations. So it's hard to know how much light it would shed at this point. Mm -hmm. You know, and and to to the point you're talking about, what we've heard from government officials, the the current defense minister is Bill Blair. Of course, he was the public safety minister at the time of the app's development, and he says he wasn't made aware of any of the cost overruns uh, re regarding uh, Arrive Can uh, because, uh, as you noted, he makes the argument that normal accounting procedures were not happening. So uh, I, I'm wondering what you what you actually make of that argument. Is it possible to to be a minister and to not know that there is such a huge cost overrun. I mean, that's one of the key questions about this. I think like there's the thing about this story, I think, and why it has the legs it does is that it cuts in these different ways about, you know, what where what really happened, who was responsible, who knew what when, and why wasn't there, uh, you know, signs up the flagpole that the cost of this is ballooning. And it kept ballooning over time. And so it's hard to think, you know, that the, the public servants involved nobody told the minister nobody told the minister's staff there was like it's hard it's hard to wrap your mind around that and so i think when a minister says that there's going to be questions about okay well what what happened then like how could you possibly not know that and so i but again i think this is what the ministers uh you know, this this is what the, the line that they're holding is so that um you know he, they, they want to make this argument that this wasn't something that ministers were aware of therefore there's there's no connection to the liberal government Mm -hmm. Well, you know, and to that, you know, it, it, it has been raised more than once. In fact, Larry Brock was on the program yesterday, Conservative uh, Member of Parliament, and he was asking, where is ministerial accountability? I, I, I convened a panel, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, same question, where is the ministerial responsibility? Are you surprised that there's been no ministerial responsibility uh, invoked at this point in regards to this app? So, like the confidence convention um, is is the big the big convention in our system constitutionally, right? The constitutional con the confidence convention meaning that the prime minister and cabinet need the confidence of the house. We know that all of the other conventions kind of stem from that, and the ministerial responsibility one is a key one in that the minister, in order for there to be transparency about what happens in government and for that to be made clear to the House of Commons and to Canadians, we need ministers to be responsible. It means they answer for what happens in their departments. Um, we haven't heard, to me anyway, we haven't heard this concept of ministerial responsibility, ministerial, ministerial accountability being thought through and spoken through as much as we used to. Right. Like, I mean, for those who remember uh, back in the 90s when there was the billion dollar boondoggle at HRSDC or whatever it was called, then Jane Stewart was the minister and she got up and wore it every day in question period. And Prime Minister Prechen sat there and, and let her take the questions, however miserable it got. And we don't really see the same application now. Right. Like we don't see the same taking this right to the minister. Instead, the conservatives and Pierre Polyev seem to be quite, quite keen to take it to the prime minister's feet instead and try to put it on, on, on his, his doorstep. And so what ends up happening, I think, is that there's a bit of a blurring of the understanding that 
ministers are supposed to know what's happening in their departments. And it's not enough to say, well, I didn't know. Nobody told me I wasn't briefed, even though this is now something that was supposed to be 80 grand. That's up to $60 million. Like for that, that whole concept of ministerial responsibility is a hollow one. If this is how things are going. Well, we can cer certainly continue to watch because there are many calls being made right now. But Lori, I always appreciate the insight you bring. I thank you for this. Thanks, Michael. Take care.